team play with so much poise, so much control to get 2-0 up, then the big incident everybody's talking about. I mean, what are your thoughts on the match itself and, and the red card? Uh, first of all, the first um, 25 minutes till the red card, uh, we played very good. I think it was the best uh, minutes of our team in this season. Uh, so very pleased with that, with that performance, scored two great goals. Um, yeah, and then the red card changes everything. But also then you are very disappointed by halftime when you concede two such goals, because I think still we were in control, but yeah, both goals couldn't, uh, shouldn't count. Uh, first is offside, and the second is a very soft and, uh, uh, and an embarrassing decision. We seem to have no luck at the moment. I know you don't use excuses. You never have done. You've always been very honest. We got in front in the second half with a penalty of our own and your team battled so hard with 10 men. Um, what happened then? Was it the game management? I mean, they seem so in control again with 10 even. Yeah, I think so. And so that is disappointing then that you're know, still losing the game. And uh, But we have to take it uh, as it has happened. I mean, we can't just bemoan the luck, of course, but you did play so well. Do you take some positives at all from that, from the way your team played before the red card and with 10? Absolutely. They say we will be controlling the game. And as you say, also uh, with 10, uh, we are keeping the ball. And yeah, that is positive. And we take that. Uh, but especially, I think, uh, till the red card. Uh, those moments, those minutes in the game, are we dictating the game, uh, passing the ball around, switching the game, uh, scoring two great goals. Yeah, that is what we take with us. But of course, uh, we're still disappointed. And uh, with me, I think all the fans are very disappointed. Yeah, well, we wish a safe trip back to Manchester. See you back there. Controversial incidents in this game, which led to this kind of a topsy-turvy back and forward result. Let's bring in Christina Uncle, who is our FIFA rules expert, who we want to talk to about this one. Can I just ask you a general question uh, first off, Christina? Did you feel like the referee had a poor game? Uh, I, I don't think he had a poor game overall, but I can see why the football world doesn't like some of those calls. And it's the worst feeling in the world to be the official, knowing that you're applying a law that people aren't going to like on that reaction. Uh, but knowing that you're going to still have to enforce it. So well, collectively, I don't think he had a poor game. I think some of the management style, he could have done a little bit differently, but ultimately he got the decisions correct. And I know that's going to frustrate people. All right. So let's go through a couple of these incidents one by one. First off, uh, Marcus Rashford sending off straight red. Um, Peter Schmeichel, I think it was said, terrible decision. Thierry Henry said never a red card. What was, what was your take on what you saw? Two points to focus on specifically on uh, Rashford's taking a look at his left into that ankle position there. The two things we need to focus on is one, uh, and I know Kerger mentioned about the speed and the force and just shielding the play, is effectively does he have the right to put his left foot in there uh, and shield the ball? The answer is yes. But because his foot is stuck into that ground, there doesn't allow that leverage. So when we take a look at red card incidents, the, dis the discussion in the language is serious foul play. Does he endanger the safety of the opponent? Once we take away discussions about intent, there is no language of the law about intent. And you take a look at where his foot is. It's planted, studs into that ankle, the foot's trapped, and it goes into it. That does rise to the level of interpretation for us to apply a red card. So was this the appropriate recommendation for VAR for serious foul play for a red card because of the factual elements of this game? The answer is yes. Once you take out intent, which a lot of people are focusing on, you're right, there is no intent by Rashford on this. But because the foot is planted, it's stagnant, and therefore the studs are going into it with that, you don't need a lot of pressure and force at that moment to potentially break an ankle, and that's what leads it into a red card. Yes or no, would you have given a red? Yes, we would have to give a red. This is consistent and this is expected. The referee's position on that, sometimes I understand VAR, a referee can't see it. The referee couldn't have had a better position. He was literally five yards away from it, saw it in real time and just waved play on. He then goes to the monitor and I understand he's probably got no option, but his position is absolutely fantastic. For me, a yellow card is suffice there. And the referee's position is fantastic and nobody else on that pitch thinks... There's any danger of being a red card. No one stops, no one appeals. The game carries on and the referee's position couldn't have been better. Micah, you look disgusted. I think, Jamie, you hit it. Oh, go ahead, Micah. Uh, no, I, I agree exactly with what Jamie said. I, there's always this talk about putting um, ex-players within the, the referees and learning the game. Anyone who's played the game knows 
full well that that should be a yellow card and not a red card. Obviously, by by your law, it comes out a little bit different, but just, there's no intent there. I mean, he is endangered the pawn a little bit, but I think a yellow would be the right decision there. I just, I, I can't get in, in my head why Clint, that's a red. It's two no's. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with everything that they're saying. That's how I feel. I think there need to be more players that have played the game at a professional level that are having these discussions with the referees. Um, I'm not a big fan of VAR because it makes the ref look bad if they go and they're able to look at the replay and they get it wrong and then they come out and admit their mistake. It'd be better to, to not have VAR in the first place. And also, I think it brings the game for the fans in the sense of not knowing when to celebrate goals. Is, is it going to be called back? Is it not? I have no problem with goal line technology. I have no problem with all, all Offside technology, but for me, I think VAR runs the game. It slows the game down. It forces players to try to snitch on each other, to hold the ball, to wait, to, to look at the play again. I, I honestly don't like it, but like like Christina said, I mean, it's a difficult job to have. I, I totally agree with what he just said. I put a tweet out and Christina replied to me uh, about it. I've, I've always been a big advocate for it because I always think the game should evolve and move forward. And I, I always think if we're missing big decisions that are costing teams points, we've got to try and, you know, you want the right team to win, I would say. But I actually think, and I want to ask you, Christina, as an official, do you think officials or the game is actually how much is the, the game gained from having VAR and also for you as an official you don't grow up wanting to be stuck in a room looking at replays you want to be on a field of play managing a game of football how is it from your point of view and as I said do you think the game has gained enough for us to stick with VAR uh, Jamie I love this question on the overall VAR concept itself from an official standpoint, having grown up, not needing it, feeling the context, the, uh, you know, what the players are demanding, what the game expects at that moment, that is the art of officiating, right? You can call balls and strikes, sorry, and for the American fans, right, in baseball, balls and strikes in and of itself, and that's factual and basis, but what makes a good referee to a great referee is those who can feel the game, they can sense the game, they can sniff the game. You're right, he's standing right there, it's a yellow card. Many of us would have probably given a yellow card in the instance but the biggest point here to highlight is that VAR was not introduced by the officials. VAR was introduced by the players, the coaches, the clubs, the, the leagues. They are the ones who wanted VAR to correct the hands of God, the Maradona's, all of those things. That's what VAR was introduced for. And the laws themselves are created by IFAB. Referees don't sit on those committees. It's actually players, coaches that sit on these committees that say, here is what we think should be and should not be a red card. So with all of that put together, that's how VAR is put together. That's how the laws are put together. From an officiating standpoint, we are okay with knowing that there's going to be some errors because we're human. However, the modern day game with the numerous amount of cameras that are there is not okay with there being a margin of error. And until those worlds come together and understand that there will be a margin of error and then those who want 100% certainty, that's where we're always gonna have these arguments and conflicts, especially when it comes to handling offenses. Is that subjective and should that have been sent down? All right, cool. Um, I guess let's move on to the penalty incidents then because there were two penalty incidents in this one, Christina. Uh, one given for Copenhagen at 2-1 Man United, another one given for Man United at 2-2. Can you give us your thoughts on both of those? Uh, one thing I can say is at least the officials are being consistent on the application, right? So here, unfortunately, the deflection argument is going away. So anyone arguing a deflection in the first potential handling, that argument has gone away from the current interpretation. Then you had essentially hitting twice. Here, this is another one that I think is really good for up for conversation. However, in the current interpretation, his right arm extended outside of his silhouette and effectively no, no. leaving it there. Yes, I understand the jumping components. I get that. Um, but be, during the current interpretation of handling, I'm not a fan of the current interpretation of handling. I want to put that out there. But this will fall into what they want from a recommendation. Favorite, and it's a second penalty offense. That really gets me, and I would rather put handling because it's sub subjective back into the arms of the refereeing and saying, what is the overall impact in this play in and of itself? Get rid of silhouettes to a certain extent. All the, the argument should be, does this materially impact the play? Yes or no. And that kind of helps the referee get to the guidance of, should we give this as a penalty or not? Yeah, I, I agree with what you've actually just said there, Christine. I, the, ha the Harry Maguire one, I can almost understand, because when we talk about the, the silhouette, even though it's close, his arm is out there. So I can understand the, the red. On the second one, 
the guy's coming down, he's got his back to play, and his arm, it's, it's his elbow that's just slightly outside the silhouette. It's half a yard away. There's no way... I don't even think any official... You, I think you've just said yourself there, the second one is not a penalty, virtually, and I don't think anyone in football thinks that is a penalty. No one, on, you know, and I just see the, the, the players as well appealing for it because they know as soon as a ball hits an arm now in the penalty box, they've got a great chance of getting it a penalty. This is never yeah, a penalty. But actually, he actually gets fouled. He actually gets fouled. Rand fouling him and pushing him. He's got both his hands on him. He's trying to get himself back into the correct position. How is that outside the silhouette? I mean, uh, what do you expect him to do there? I, I don't, I just don't. The game has officially gone. <laughs> <laughs> Christina, do you enjoy coming in for these weekly arguments? Is it fun for you? I I don't. I wouldn't call them arguments. I call them discussions. Um, and I agree. I, I, I enjoy these conversations because without a voice here at the table, then it's everyone projecting essentially without the voice of the referee. So I'm glad to be here. I know I'm losing my voice a little bit, but uh, it's probably because I'm having arguments on hand. I do really enjoy being with this group, uh, especially when Meek starts laughing. For some reason, I always start laughing. It's just contagious. <laughs> Christina, you are fantastic. You've explained you well. Brilliantly, as always, but just that last one I don't agree with because of the silhouette, but fantastic. Keep doing a great job. <laughs> Appreciate you, oh, Christina. Thanks, me, because I got your approval. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to go to a break. Uh, we're going to bring you more. Uh, we're going to talk about the football. We're going to talk about the rest of the, the action from that game in just a minute. Stay with us. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Kate, Thierry, Jamie, Micah, protest over. We're good? Let's get on with the show. Get on with the show, everybody. That's me let's told. Uh, okay, let's go over to Peter Schmeichel. I'm sure he wants to talk to us. Uh, Peter, I guess you were listening into the last segment with Christina Uncle and her ex explanation of those controversial incidents. Your thoughts on what she had to say, your thoughts on the game in general. We're interested. Yeah, obviously I'm, I'm frustrated about uh, Manchester United's performance tonight. I, I, I just want to say one thing about what Christina said uh, and the explanation. I mean, I love Christina. I think she explains everything very, very good. But I'm a bit tired of, we don't understand now who we are playing this game for. It's for the people who are here, the 36,000 here, and not a single one of them reacted to any of those incidents. No one was screaming for a red card. No one was screaming penalty on, for both situations. And, and it, the game stopped. Nobody knows what goes on. And it kind of kills, you know, what was, by, I have to say that, a great atmosphere. It just kills it. It kills the enthusiasm for, 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 uh, for fans who are in the stadium. And, and I just think, yeah, it's fine. You can explain your way out of the, with, with the letter of the law. But common sense has gone out of football. And VAR, I mean, they've had a bad two weeks. I have to say that. We need to rethink that. That, that is my opinion. Uh, what about the, just the overall picture for Manchester United? How do you come away from that game feeling about the current state of affairs there? Yeah, I mean, cruising a 2-0, could have been 3-0. Rasmus Hoyland had that chance that was saved uh, by the goalkeeper. But then he had another one which could have been 3-0 again. And then, of course, the red card happened. And, and you know, it, it, you know. Well, well, first of all, this is the first goal. This is something we haven't seen from Manchester United for a long time. Van Bissaka obviously been injured. And, and Anson has been in this position that Rashford was in here. Now, we haven't seen them work together as a pairing. That leaves that space for McTominay to run into. And it was just brilliant to see that. We were screaming for something like that to happen for weeks. And Van Bissaka, people say he's not a good player when he gets a ball. I think he's doing really well. It just doesn't look elegant. But it was brilliant. Um, and of course, Russ was Hoyland scoring that goal. Uh, and, and here we go. But that's what you get for running lost courses. As a striker, you keep running, you keep believing that this will happen. You look at Russ was Hoyland here, he never stops. And that's 2 0. And at that point, Manchester United are cruising, and you think it's going to be 3 0 rather than 2 1. Uh -oh. So after that point is when we see Marcus Rashford get the straight red, Man United go down to 10, and then Copenhagen begin to get back into it, Thierry. Yes, they did. Um, every time they had a go, uh, apart you know, uh, uh, from that moment, sorry, they, they looked like they were going to score all the time. They hit the crossbar before that. Um, great ball back from Gonsalves for Elenusi. 
and obviously it makes it 2-1. And then at that moment, guys, I think we all thought it was going to be 2-2. Jamie? Yeah, you said, didn't you, Thierry? <sighs> yeah, I mean, the really poor thing for Manchester United is, is the actual panic. And, and what I mean by that is that in this game, they've conceded twice in four minutes. Twice. Mm. So when the first goal goes in, you know, as experienced players, you need to keep your head, so you need to be on that pitch to calm things down. And before you know it, yes, they get to 2-2. But as Thierry said, the second half was really strange. Copenhagen didn't come flying off the traps, let Manchester United have a lot of the ball. Manchester United find themselves now in front. And then Copenhagen decide to put the afterburners on. Very late goals, Micah. Yeah, and you must expect that. I mean, Man United, like I said, defended not the greatest. But when you've got 10 men, it's always difficult, especially in a Champions League.